I'm Kathy Kobayashi, and uh, I'm here because I uh, worked on the Shades of L.A. project from the project of the L.A. Public Library, and it was with Carolyn Kozo Cole. She was the head of the uh, collection at that point in the 1990s. There just weren't that many photographs of, of ethnic Los Angeles. It, it, uh, I think even at that point it had maybe two million photographs, more than two million, but, but it was a lot of um, newspaper photographs, that sort of thing. No one had the ethnic photographs. But uh, what happened in 1990 was that someone came, uh, actually from the Southern California Library um, in South LA, uh, looking for photographs of Watts uh, as a community, uh, people living in Watts. And so she opened the, the Watts folder and uh, there was just a, a photograph of the Pacific Electric Railway Station. That was it. And she said, okay, this is not, <laughs> this is not right. This is not, we've got to get the photographs of the community. So uh, she, she uh, had this insight that if, there, if the photographs aren't in the public collections anywhere, uh, in any of the, then they must be out there in people's homes, in people's private collections, in their family albums, and that we just needed to get out there, have these people bring in the photographs, that we would copy them, get the stories. And she was right, basically. And so that was really the beginning of the, the, the project. I was really impressed with uh, the Shades of LA project when it, when it first uh, was launched in the 1990s, because they, they, they offered alternatives to the stereotypes of, of ethnic communities, of ethnic people uh, in here in, in Los Angeles by providing real stories. The photo days were really these kind of wonderful events. They became these events. I mean, at first we just planned them because it seemed like the best way to copy the photographs. But this side benefit of actually becoming a kind of grassroots community history project uh, and, and having people meet face to face is really wonderful. I was notified that the downtown public library was doing photo days, so I went to it. And I took the uh, about three boxes full of pictures. Oh, that's my mother. I brought everything from family photos to photos of the houses to photos of the pets. Um, oh, you name it, you name it. it just it, photos that you would take in life. Oh, that's my great grandfather. Alexander. There were other people in line who had their pictures too. I can remember um, one lady was Asian and she had her pictures and another one was Hispanic and she had her pictures. One was in front of me and one was in back of me in the line and we were sharing the pictures and it was so funny because I could come up with a picture of my family and they'd have a picture very similar to my picture but it was their family. So it proved that people are just people. Another one of my favorite photographs. Uh, I think this is an amazing photograph of this sort of transition in immigrant families. So the parents had immigrated and and, and the children have, you know, some traditional Japanese with the kimono, of course. But there's also the Western clothing, the tricycle sort of in the house, which is sort of interesting. The Christmas tree itself uh, as well. And in fact, if you look at the titles of the book, not only are they the Japanese children's books, but there's actually a Mother Goose book. But it's also so deliberately laid out. It's just this kind of presentation and clearly a kind of a special photograph for the family. And, and it's something that we can all relate to. It's a familiar scene, but um, what's gonna happen to that family in just a little bit more than, than, than 10 years? That association with home, with place, is going to be removed when we understand the experience of Japanese Americans after 1942, after the executive order to remove 120,000 Japanese Americans. So we can look 
at that wonderful scene and actually use it as a teaching tool to talk about the internment of Japanese Americans because that that scene of Christmas is going to be removed. They're going to be denied that. They're going to be denied place, denied home. And I think another photograph that would go well with it from the Shades of LA project is there's a photograph, I think a 1944 photograph, of a golf club, a, a golf group at the, uh, at the Gila internment camp in Arizona. And when I look at that photograph, first of all, I don't see any grass. There isn't, there isn't a golf course. Uh, I see nothing but cactus and, and just dry ground in the background. But what I see in the faces uh, uh, of the people, of the, 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 those who were interned or in prison at, at Gila and at other camps as well, is I see this, this amazing resilience to maintain normalcy, to maintain a normal life, whether it's golf or a beauty pageant or a baseball team or a, or a dance, a teenage dance that was going on in one of the internment camps. So we can use these photographs to understand the experiences of, of a group like Japanese Americans during World War II or slightly before and to understand what their experiences was and what, what, did they, what was their home life like and what did they lose. This is a, a, a great photo too. Um, one of those just great photographs, 1924, young couple in love shortly before they got married. And um, I always think it's one of those photographs where you look and you think, oh, that could have been me. Or, or more likely, I wish that could have been me. <laughs> you know, that's just they look so happy and love. And then you realize that the backstory of the photograph is that uh, they're in the segregated beach, that this was a period when the beaches were still quite segregated in Los Angeles. Um, a lot of people don't realize that the beaches were segregated here. Uh, but, uh, but, but that was definitely part of L.A. history as well. Likewise, there is another, uh, another photograph of a group of African Americans that could be a family, and they are standing on the rocks with a large sign, uh, a clear demarcation line of the segregated beach at Santa Monica. And, and they're looking at you. It's, it's quite a serious shot because it's sending that message that African Americans knew that they live in a segregated area and that the beach, the access to the beach was, was very much controlled. Um, and that's, these photographs can be very, very good teaching tools for us to understand that, uh, yes, there was injustice. There was injustice and, and many of these wrongs were righted at, at some point in, in history. Um, but it also tells you human, human stories that, that people are pretty much the same and in, in difficult situations, they do their best to, to maintain a normal life. I think what I find unique about the Shades of LA project is that it does capture the kind of diversity of Los Angeles' families and Los Angeles' communities and neighborhoods, uh, places that just weren't seen in the public record before. Whenever I give the uh, sort of uh, Shades, um, I have a kind of slideshow show, show them, I, I really want them to go and do it themselves. I really, I, I'd like them to just, even when they look at their own family albums, just see them in a different light. Sort of see them as not just personal, which is obviously important, but not just for, as, as historical documents. As where do they fit into the range of history? What do they, what do they mean? Uh, uh, not just to my family, but to a kind of a larger history.